Hey guys, what's up? Josh here from Momentum Productions and today I have a very important video for you today. Uh, we're going to go right back to the basics and so we're going to talk about tripod operation. Now I know for a lot of you think that operating a tripod is very straightforward and very easy. Well, I'm going to show you today how operating a tripod is not as easy as it looks or seems. There's actually a lot more to operating a tripod uh, to get the most beautiful and cinematic shots. So that's what we're going to be covering today in uh, this tutorial video. So let me tell you the gear that I'm using today. I'm using the Sony a7S with a Canon 28 to 135 millimeter lens with the uh, Fotga uh, lens adapter. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's uh, a Chinese uh, lens adapter for the Sony a7S and we are using the fancier fluid head video tripod 717. So this is a very good tripod for uh, cameras up to 14 pounds. So I will post a link in the description where you can find this uh, awesome fluid head tripod. Now the, obviously there are more expensive tripods out there like the Manfrotto's, but for cameras like this, you really don't need anything better than what I'm using. Uh, Manfrotto's are meant for really, really heavy cameras such as the RED cameras with all these rigs and follow focus systems, but I'm not using any of that. I just have this camera here with this lens and, it's, and this tripod is more than enough uh, for this setup. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you buy a fluid head tripod with a ball head, I'm gonna to explain to you what the ball head is. The ball head on a tripod is very, very valuable because it can allow you to straighten out the horizon in all of your shots. For example, when I set up my tripod earlier today, I noticed because I'm on uneven ground, I'm shooting on grass, my camera was really, really crooked. Now, how did I fix this? Uh, well, the ball head on tripods are very, very cool because like I said before, they help you align the horizon to make the shot look straight. So let me start recording on the A7S so I show you guys exactly what I mean. All right, so let me put everything. This is a manual focus lens, so. All right, so I'm gonna start recording. Now, if you look at my footage here, it looks very, very crooked. Now, with the fancier, tripod and even the Manfrotto tripods, ball heads are very, very similar. You have a metal housing here that fits into what we call a cradle. And that cradle is what holds the ball mount. So basically, imagine a ball in a cradle, all right? There's a lot of motion that this is kind of a weird thing to do on camera, but uh, yeah, this is the ball, this is the cradle. And the ball sits in the cradle and when it's loosened up, it can move around like this, all right? So it's a very, you know, very flexible motion. So when I loosen up the ball, I can actually move the angle or move the ball around the cradle. All right, so yeah, so you can really, really straighten out the shot, straighten out the horizon. Now, all these tripods come with a, a bubble, bubble level. You'll be able to look at the bubble level to make sure that your shot is straight. And also with the Sony's, with the newer Sony uh, cameras, they have uh, a leveler built inside the camera which tells you if the shot is leveled or not. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the recording on the Sony. All right, so that's step one when you're setting up your tripod. You can be on really uneven ground uh, with the ball mount because it's really, really simple. On cheaper tripods, you actually have to mess with the legs uh, going up and down like this and stuff like that. But with the more expensive tripods that are all metal and all that good stuff, uh, they usually come with a ball mount that you can mess around with to level out your shot. So that's really, really awesome. And if the ball adjustment does not level out the shot as much as you want, of course you can always mess with the leg extenders and extend one leg farther than the other and that can level out your shot. It's a little bit windy today. My hair is getting in my face, so <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it's awesome weather today in California, so. Okay, on with the next thing. Now, panning and tilting is also very, very important. When you're shooting a documentary, panning and tilting may not, when, when you're shooting an interview, let's say, panning and tilting may not be as important, but let's say you're filming an action sequence or you're filming a cinematic shot with a slider or something like that, and you have a B camera on a tripod or something, uh, you know, panning and tilting is very, very important in order to achieve beautiful cinematic shots. 
So a typical user would grab the tripod, right? Probably just, you know, with one hand, go to the pan and just do this, right? Simple motion, right? Okay. Now let me tell you what the problem is with that. Because fluid head tripods have a little bit of resistance in them, especially with the fancier, there's a little bit of resistance, you can actually see some rebound uh, movements in your shots. What I mean by rebound is if you use one hand and you do a pan and then you stop, the tripod sometimes has the tendency to go back a little bit by itself because of that resistance that's built into the fluid. So when you do the pan motion, I always recommend using two hands, just like this, one on the handle and one right on, uh, right above the ball, uh, the ball head, okay? So it's very, very important to use two hands when you, when you do a pan. That way, when you let go of the handle, you will not have a rebound movement of the tripod, the tripod's resistance, okay? So if I use one hand and I do a pan, again, I might get some rebound uh, from the resistance of the tripod. Uh, very, very minor, but noticeable to a professional. So if I shoot a professional shoot for a corporation or something like that, and they see a rebound shot, they're not gonna be happy. You want the tripod to do one solid smooth movement without any rebounds. I just noticed this was in my hair. All right, on with the next thing, tilting. So, tilting is very, very important. Again, with fluid head tripods, there can be some rebound. So when you are tilting, remember, you can always use a second hand to help with the tilt. One hand on the handle and one right above the ball mount. That way you will not get any, get any rebound movements from the tripod. So if I let one hand go off of the handle, and I hold it up here, you know, right under the lens, I will not get a rebound shot. But technically, you know, you always wanna make sure that your hands are both on or off the tripod at the same time. You don't wanna lift one hand off of the tripod and then the second one. You wanna do it both at the same time. Now, when you're using a RED camera with the rig or follow focus and you're using a Manfrotto tripod, you 100% need to operate the tripod with two hands. You're talking about a huge tripod, a huge camera setup, you know, you need two hands. With the Manfrotto's, I noticed a lot of rebound shots, uh, uh, rebound movements with the tripods because the camera setup is so heavy. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna automatically wanna rebound just a little bit. Um, so a lot of the times when you don't have a camera on the setup, you'll be able to see the rebound. Like if I let go of these tensioners, sometimes the tripod will want to center up by itself. There's a little spring inside that, see, it's going to drop back down because of weight. But if I have no weight on the tripod, it's going to spring back up uh, to level out uh, the tripod mount. So that's very, very, very important. Now, one last tip for this video that I think is very, very important, especially for beginners. If you are filming a subject, let's disregard interviews for right now. If you're filming a subject for a scene, you know, even though you're, you have good composition, you know, you're following the rule of thirds, all that good stuff, and you're keeping the subject in focus and all that stuff, you know, you still want to add a little bit of movement to the shot. Very, very subtle movements. If you notice when you're watching a movie in the movie theaters or at home or wherever you're watching the movie, <laughs> um, you'll notice that in over the shoulder shot pointing at the subject, you'll notice that there's still subtle camera movements. You know, the camera is never 100% static. It's always slowly, you know, either panning tightly or tilting tightly, very, very subtle movements, uh, especially on dolly shots. When you're filming an over the shoulder shot on a subject, never just let the camera go like that because you're gonna get a very boring shot and, you know, a, you know, some movement is very, very important. It makes the shot or scene more dynamic and, and more professional looking. So always remember that when you press record on the camera, you best have both hands on the tripod at all times. So when you're filming a static shot, over the shoulder shot on somebody, you know, it's always good to keep a little bit of motion. Let me press record. Unfortunately, I don't have a subject to shoot, so I'll just shoot the camera. Um, 
the Sony that I have here that's recording us. If I leave the shot just static and just keep my hands off of the tripod, you know, imagine somebody's talking into the camera. It might get a little bit boring. Now, if I loosen up the tensioners here and I add a little bit of dynamic movement, you know, just a little bit of stuff like this, you know, very subtle, very subtle shots, um, very subtle moves, it will make the scene more dynamic. It will make the shot more dynamic. So that's very, very important. You don't want to leave the subject just static and boring. You never want to do that. Very bad idea. So the best way to make these subtle movements, you know, again, you want to make sure that one hand is on the handle on the tripod and one hand is, it can be actually under the lens, supporting the lens and just making very, very subtle movements. Again, you still want to follow the rule of thirds. You know, you want to get that great composition or if you're really ballsy, create your own sort of composition. But you, you, you want to keep the, mo the movement going. You want to keep the momentum going. You want to keep the shot dynamic. That way it doesn't become boring. So guys, that is, that is pretty much the fundamentals of how to operate a tripod. Uh, it, when you first start off in filmmaking, it may seem just like a tripod, but it's actually a very, very powerful tool. It's not meant just to put a camera on and just, you know, let it sit there. No, it's actually way, way more valuable. A tripod can be way, way, way more valuable than you think if you know how to operate it properly. So I know there was no cool drones in this, in this shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end this tutorial with a drone shot of me uh, going up into the air. So uh, let's do it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please visit my website at capturethemomentum.com. If you would like me to do another review or tutorial video on something, please uh, comment below or email me at info at capturethemomentum.com. If you're a manufacturer of a product, please email me if you want me to do a review for you. Info at capturethemomentum.com. That's my email again and uh, sign up for my free newsletter at CaptureTheMomentum.com and you'll have a chance to win a free month's worth of coaching with me uh, on Skype. So that's, that'll be a very, very valuable thing for you. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.